Hi everyone and welcome to another tech discussion by Roix Technologies. With over a decade of experience in e-commerce development, we are now answering key questions that are raised by our viewers in respect of e-commerce. Now this impacts both businesses and entrepreneurs. Now, my name is Lee Palay and with me I have Rajiv Roy. Hello everyone, I'm Rajiv Roy. I'm running this company for the last 10 years. We have developed several e-commerce sites and few sites are selling more than a million per day and few sites in a month they are up to selling a thousand. So we know what is good and what is bad and how to do a good, a bad website to a good website. Yeah, we, we understand this thing. So here on this video, we want to share our experience. What, what experience we have in last 10 years, we want to share with you and that's the why we are here. Absolutely. So uh, before I jump into it, I just want to encourage you to uh, comment with any specific questions uh, that you may have uh, in respect of e-commerce or any technology related questions. These are, are, are things that we can also address in future discussions. Now, during this discussion, we actually looking at profit maximization in e-commerce. Very, very uh, important topic because as you now develop in a whole lot of uh, um, websites and e-commerce websites, it's important that they become profitable. That they, yes, and, and it, this could be in the short term or at any point along the way, dependent on break-even points. So from your perspective though, Rajiv, um, do you find that the e-commerce uh, space is actually thriving and uh, is it profitable and how profitable is it? Okay, so e-commerce is, uh, is, is booming from 2000, uh, 2020, actually it is booming. So there's no doubt here. Yeah? Before also, uh, it, it is actually taking a good impact actually on the on the market. Okay, if you see the statistic, they are saying actually billion dollar actually transferring the uh, on here. Okay, the money is transferring. It's good, yeah. But the competition is really high, yeah. And all the sector are not doing good. Some sector are doing really good, but uh, maximum is not is not profitable. Some sector, just let me let me tell you. So e-learning application, yeah. So that actually very profitable. Health and wealth business, e-commerce side, those are very profitable uh, subscription based actually the e-commerce platform these are very uh, profitable just think about the netflix right every every month you are paying actually 15 dollars so that kind of subscription based really doing good and uh, tag related product not a tag product yeah mm -hmm. so however tag accessories is there right so however you're buying your phone you need actually the charger you need actually the cover those kind of business are really doing good but are not done the main one so that uh, that kind of different thing is there so it depends on actually which sector and uh, what category and the profit is depends on that. Okay, no, absolutely. Now, you're looking at these e-commerce businesses, now can they easily enter the market from a capital investment point of view? Uh, because ultimately there's a multitude of different uh, businesses. And so what does it mean if, if it's easily to enter? What does it mean from a profitability standpoint for any business that is looking at getting in that space? Look, e-commerce is a very simple to enter the business. Just think about it. You have an e-commerce website, you have one license, you can enter the market. So there is nothing. You, even you don't need to buy the product. There is a lots of companies that are actually giving the product to you. And there's a lots of people, what they do whenever they actually get the order from the customer, at that time they buy the phone market and then they're giving delivery to you. Mm -hmm. So there's a lots of thing actually happen. And it's a very minimum ca capital is required. So what happened in that case? So because the minimum cap capital and the business has a huge potential, so lots of people entering the market and the competition is higher. When the competition is going to be higher, however you are, you are going to sell a product, the product marketing cost is going to be high. Advertisement cost is going to be very, very high. So you can't actually afford it. So yeah, so entering is actually easy, no doubt, but is a profitable, not too much profitable, and uh, the marketing cost and other costs is really high. Okay, so, but, but that raises the question. So, you know, you have so many businesses that want to move in this direction. And as you just mentioned, sometimes it's not profitable. Can you give me three general tips though to, to get the business to be more profitable? Okay, the first of all is actually the optimized operational efficiency. So that's very important, yeah? So it's thing line your supply chain. So how you actually are, uh, you are arranging your product? So are you developing by yourself or you are purchasing from some third mm. party? So supply channel must be actually the standard and there will be no failure on the on this thing. Yeah. Managing the inventory. So how much inventory you need to manage? Yeah. And how you're clearing the inventory. So you can't sell everything. So you have to clear it. And you have a proper strategy how you are clearing the inventory. Mm -hmm. So automation the process. 
you process need to be automated every time when i am at the order come you are opening the order you check the supplier you check the inventory and then you are in delivery or talking with the delivery company if you are doing all those things manually you can't actually be a successful it should be a, a automated process the second one is actually focus on the customer lifetime value mm-hmm. yeah so this is a different thing actually so in e-commerce you kind of uh, the costing just think about the costing perspective to gain a customer is very costly yeah suppose you are selling a small amount suppose you are selling a pro, uh, uh, iphone cover cover which, which is very a very cheap price but to to get a customer to buy that thing you have you are spending a huge amount of money so with one product you are not, you are not actually getting the the profit from there so what you have to do you have to actually sell actually lots of more item so you are a customer you have they have to keep you actually on their platform for a long time to make a profit so that's the lifelong value of you and they people need to be focused on that thing how can actually they uh, they make it a large and the, and the amount of purchase can increase mm. that's very important and the third part is actually the invest in the smart marketing mm. yeah mm. Uh, in dubai is actually one of the costliest advertisement place mm. yeah it's is is saying that it is the second costliest after the us dubai is the second costliest place few keyword is there you have to pay around 25 dollar for one click in dubai so how do you sell a product it's not it's not actually the profitable if you are doing advertisement on the google and then uh, you are selling from your side it is not profitable so you have to be sell smartly there is a different way that there suppose seo is one of the smartest way so it's naturally the ranking is coming people are getting the lead and they are actually buying the product from you so it's a is a one a smarter way another was influencer marketing i i saw some actually the back back at show they actually they hire influencer food food blogger and they showed the the food item and within a within it few days they are literally selling few thousand actually the cake so that is possible so you have to be think very smartly how you actually do the marketing so that's the main three point optimize your operational efficiency the focus on the customer uh, lifetime value and actually the invest in the smart marketing mm. that's very interesting on the second point of the lifetime value as well i find myself um doing repeat purchases based on you know there's there's a lower amount offered to me for for that particular uh, product so i think there's there's some smart ways around achieving you know that lifetime value as well um what by the way i need to say all here so we said actually the smart way to manage the business we have our own, own product that is called the ocommerce right so that is actually enterprise level e-commerce platform which actually do lots of automation uh, automatically suppose you have a more than a thousand order coming in in a day it's not possible for you to go on one by one order and then actually go for the next step not possible yes. so our whole platform actually do the whole process even up to the delivery and also the customer feedback everything in automated way okay now that's brilliant um one of the big questions that comes up in this space website or mobile yep. in terms of you know which is going to bring money what are what are your perspectives on this okay look this is actually the mixed conversation yeah so website is accessibility is very high if you have a website yeah uh, just go uh, just send a link people actually open the link and buy the product simple yeah. mm-hmm. and you are getting a access of the seo which is actually the free marketing Uh, from the else from the google you can actually get it people are searching the product in the google they have found you and they come back to you it's simple but, uh, but what mobile actually do mobile has a, a more personalized actually yeah and once a customer uh, and using your mobile application the lifetime will is very high in the mobile application yeah mm-hmm. which is not in the website we said you actually buy the product next time you forget it actually which website you bought it but once you install the mobile application in very rare case you are actually forgetting this thing by the way the mobile application send you push notification to actually provoke you to buy more items so it depends uh, uh which one actually become a more profitable for you but in my sense what actually we are telling the customer first go for the website while the website is developed launch it then start the mobile application development so what happened you are getting the customer from the website for the easy access and when they actually log in at that time just send a message that okay download their application with the same username id and if they are using it then your lifetime value of the customer is going high mm. so that should be the strategy maybe in my sense yeah absolutely i guess it's a, 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 you know there's a journey here in terms of when they starting up and how 
how how best to launch and then get the traction from there. Sure. I, I think uh, you know once once they reach the point of personalization, mm -hmm. you know, mobile application really becomes more and more important. And um, so so yes, it's it's again dependent. Now talking about uh, the actual um, uh, models in terms of profit maximization, you, one can can look at uh, volume based uh, sales. Now. In a market such as India, as an example, the yeah. population is really large, right? Yeah. So, so you can. I think it's very easy to go for a volume-based uh, model, um, and then you can you can definitely, with a lower margin, you can make a good profitability. What's your take from a UAE perspective? Because population is definitely much lower here, mm -hmm. and the market uh, preferences are a bit different. Yes. Look, uh, in Indian market, how what is the how you actually make the profit? So you have to sell more. Very simple, right? Mm -hmm. Is actually the 1.2 billion people actually is living there, right? So you have to sell more to actually make a profit. Mm -hmm. But the same logic you can't implement all the way or the the middle east market. It's not possible because there's a very small number of people. But think about these people. They have a more capability of buying. They are uh, the buying capability more. They are very. Uh, they understand the technology they are using. Uh, they pay by the card. Maximum people. So and everyone has a smartphone. So this kind of thing you have. So what do you have to do in in the middle market? So the lifetime value you have to increase. So how can you do it? You, instead of selling the quantity of the product, you have to sell the quality product. Mm -hmm. and then the first of thing and the focus of the average order value. Yeah, while you are actually selling one product, don't focus on only selling that product. Just try to add something more. Yeah, mm -hmm. suppose you are in a grocery grocery. Yeah, people actually buy one one grocery item, and at the same time, if you say okay, you bought this item, you just buy this thing. So uh, you you can actually suppose think about a pasta. Uh, I bought a pasta, and then it is automatically actually showing me the the some sauces which I can use actually in the pasta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe I thought okay, okay, let me buy it. Actually, it will be it will be helpful for me in future. Maybe I have a stock now, but I I need it. So. Instead of buying one item, I actually end up buying actually two, three items. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we have to make a mechanism so that people actually buy more. This thing you can't do it in India because they have a low capability of the buying. So their money is actually limited. They have a limited budget. Yeah. So you have to sell whatever they are trying to buy. Just sell it first. Mm -hmm. Then go for the other one. And here, don't don't think in that way. Just sell more actually. How so that actually your basket will is actually. My uh, and, yeah. No, when you when you say that, you know, I think there's a lot of learnings along the way about what was done in the physical world, right? In in terms of traditional stores. Now, now obviously over time, there's there's been a lot of uh, enhancements or, or, or developments in so far as what actually works, what marketing strategies. So just thinking about, for example, buying a, a loaf of bread. Generally, you would have to go to the back of the store to yeah. pick up a loaf of bread in order to get a number of other. I well, that's that's the intention to get a whole lot of other items as well as your checkout lines. The the way in which the checkout lines are designed. I think it's the same kind of thinking that you also need to apply uh, when when it comes to an actual uh, website or mobile application. In so far as how you can maximize the profit True. based on that. That's the implement. That's they need to implement all the UAE market. Mm -hmm. Okay, now fantastic. Now some business strategies can take a significant time to to implement as well um, let's talk about some some quick hacks what I lo like to call low-hanging fruit you know these things which which can give you a good uh, uh, return on value but but maybe is a bit more uh, easier to to implement in the business to take it to the next level so what are what are some of the hacks that you can think of to maximize profit look uh, to maximize the profit there are two things the very simple thing the simple way so first of all actually we want to get a money actually immediately and whatever you are asking that okay no I don't want to get a money now I want to get a money in future but uh, what I need to do for that right so the very important part actually the uh, focus on the content so if you are focusing on the content so regularly write the new new content for our, our article our product and uh, the, how people actually getting the benefit write some new new tutorial new new video so that will give a, a natural backlink to your natural uh, traffic to your site yeah and you will get it actually the end for a long time you will get actual benefit from there it will not effect immediately suppose you wrote an article and you wrote something actually immediately you will get a traffic it will not be happen mm -hmm. but it should be in your strategy suppose how royce actually has the first three years uh we weren't getting any any lead from directly from google mm -hmm. but after that now we are not paying a single money to the google advertisement everything is coming from the natural lead 
because we actually launching this thing we actually invested on that thing four or five people of us actually continuously working on this thing to create a new new content for the for the online mm. and that's the that's the people need to be actually focused yeah as as you say you know sometimes yes that that, that can take a little while to to uh, develop the kind of leads or, or or generate the the sales but it's it's a it's a hack in terms of it's not difficult right it's content yes. so so that's something that that uh, but content can be different it's not uh, we are not saying uh, still only the text content it can be the video it can be image it can be infographic a uh, different way how uh, it depends on actually the customer level what customer they want to actually catch absolutely absolutely now from a marketing perspective um how can social media and influencer marketing uh, technologies be harnessed to expand the brand reach and uh, you know ultimately engage with with the with the larger audience and increase profitability uh, in uh, the, the last question i just said actually so we have a two target actually on about any lot actually i need to buy i need to sell immediately now and i have a long term focus right the social media and influencer marketing is the sell now mm-hmm. okay so for you you are posting anything a social a influencer actually posting anything now immediately you can see by next few days you are getting a huge amount of traffic a huge amount mm-hmm. of sell it's immediately happen so influencer marketing is a really playing a good role here because what happen actually whenever influencer are telling anything about your product so people actually feeling a trust okay look this guy actually talking about this thing maybe the food is really good maybe the product is really really great one so they need to use it yeah uh, so because this is their role model yeah they are fan of that guy actually and they are they want to buy from you and it's happening immediately and mm. so this is really really a good way uh even more effective way to ad for uh, uh compared to the advertisement so influencer marketing mm. okay but social media what happens social media you are keep a consistent uh 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 myself your vision actually so your presence to the people mm. so whenever i am actually subscribed to your, your social media account every moment i can see that okay what is happening in what is happening on this field what you are doing what is the new thing is coming so it make me uh, it give me actually more trust on your brand i know more about your brand i know more about your products you are in you are educating me mm. so it would to me very easy actually however i want to buy it mm. yeah so social media and influencer marketing is very very important absolutely i mean myself first and so i i i like to to learn about the new uh, sort of uh, vibe food outlets and so on in 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 Dubai and I generally would would you know get on to these uh, different social media spaces and that's the easiest way to yeah. find them right sure. um because that's that's the influences that would that's their task to yeah. to be able to find the spaces that you don't need to now go around everywhere and, and find the best thing and the social media what happened actually so whenever you see a social media post yeah so i can see actually lee really like this place yeah mm-hmm. so oh my god lee like this place. in that place actually i can go there sure and because uh, our taste is okay same so let's let's go there so that's actually make a social connectivity and selling the product mm. now a good way to 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 maximize profit i think um let's get into the world of ai now how can ai and machine learning be leveraged to enhance personalized shopping experience and increase customer retention to ultimately drive higher profits yeah is the talk of the town and everything is going to be changed yeah so how actually uh, the e-commerce was running before and how it is running now it is completely different even uh, a good example actually the netflix why netflix is popular before the netflix there is a lots of other paid channel were thing they are not become popular but netflix become popular the only difference reason netflix knows what you will you would like to see and it gives actually is make you addicted to see the next one next one because every time it gives you the whatever you like mm. but the before the channel was what is that actually just just showing the one by one video i have to search it if i don't know the name or anything i can't find any relation actually yeah so i'm not very interested to spend a more time so that is the kind of thing so the personalization ai is doing that kind of thing on the e-commerce so they are making it a more personalized solution Yeah, whenever I'm I'm opening, uh, just think about your uh, food application. Mm. Whenever you open the food application, you can see all the restaurant. Yeah, mm. uh, whichever you are placing the order, they are coming coming automatically there. Yeah. Not like that way. In the morning time, they will not show the actually the lunch food. They are showing it in the breakfast, which actually I like in the breakfast. Mm. Yeah, in the in the lunch time, it is showing me the the lunch kind of food. Yeah. 
So that's the way actually they are managing the the the, the, the personalization. Exactly. And that's only possible through the AI. And what happened? Why AI is important? Suppose some think about uh, I'm using on the on the food delivery application or actually is available in the market area. Yeah? They know my information and they're giving this strategy based on that. But you just recently joined there. Mm-hmm. How they actually show the information? So that's actually the they are collectively getting all the information and they are showing the personal information to you. But that's not your personalized. They are expecting they are making a profiling of you. And mm-hmm. based on that, they show you okay, okay, Lee has a collectivity with Rajiv and he has a collectivity with uh, some other guy and they like this thing and this kind of people mm-hmm. who are living here, they have this information. Let's show this thing. And that's working. Yeah. And that's uh, going to be changed actually this thing. And there is some other thing actually. So the personalized marketing is there. Their chatbot is, is, is their chatbot is very powerful now. It is not like before that. Only you have to ask some certain format. You can ask in any way. Yes. Even if we, our new website in the wife, our new developed chatbot is Iana is also launching. You can ask anything. You can she can book an appointment. You can actually meet with our our team. Everything you can do actually with with that chatbot. So that is really helpful. We make a virtual assistant that is actually possible for the e-commerce also. And uh, uh, sentimental analysis. That's also the another part actually. Now AI is doing. The, in Amazon, how many comments they are receiving? Huge amount of comment receiving because they are not selling their product. There is some other vendor they are selling the product, right? Mm-hmm. So whenever people actually giving a comment on the vendor, how Amazon knows that okay, what is going on? Is it possible to go by everyone? Not possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, AI actually is reading the content and that that gives their sentimental value. So I is okay. Is he angry? Is he happy or? Uh, he's in too much angry or what happening so then based on that it is flagging out to the, the admin people and admin people are taking the action they are not checking actually the million of the comment at the same time not possible yeah so ai has a huge thing is coming and we are as a royx we are actually implementing this kind of things actually the customer uh with a e-commerce side and uh, we are trying to maximizing their profit and uh, usability Sure, it's very interesting when you when you mention the personalization and and the, the sort of uh, data that is that is collected and and uh, how it provides you with these solutions. I think there's always two ways of looking at it, right? So it's you know you, you some may see it as uh, the privacy side where you want to be protective, but then it's it's the, the the convenience and the ease of life on the other side of it, which I definitely appreciate. Yeah. Um, you know, I look at the fact that um, living a busy uh, life you're going to forget the, the smallest things uh, that uh, is actually needed like did, did you remember to to buy this uh, do you want to purchase this uh, particular item and uh, i i forget to pay my my keys registration fee i did it yeah, I mean, it it happens. It happens. So 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 the more um, you know the, the the way in which it helps your life and the way it complements, mm-hmm. you know, much like an assistant on the side, right? Yeah. Uh, I think that's that's very important. Um, I think the last time we spoke about uh, your book on on uh, e-commerce decoded, but you know, you delved into pricing models yeah. in, as well in in that particular book. And uh, what would you see are the, the various pricing models that uh, should be considered, uh, you know, in terms of e-commerce and also considering upselling and cross-selling mm-hmm. in in that respect. It's it's a very good question actually. I want to explain a little bit in depth actually, so uh, so that our viewers know. So there is a different kind of pricing model. Is there one is the cost plus pricing. So what what happened in here whatever the whatever that is my cost uh, i just add some more money and i'm just giving the pricing suppose 100 dirham is my costing and i just add 10 dirham additional so 110 dirham is my pricing so that's a very simple way competitive pricing so i'm just looking my computer and checking the, okay what is their pricing and based on that pricing i'm just making a little bit less and then coming to the market, I'm not checking what is my cost and how my other operational cost. Mm-hmm. I'm not de- caring too much. Yeah, uh, there is a dynamic pricing in there. So think about a real life. You are have a you are booking a flight actually after one month, or you are booking a f- flight for two months. The price is not the same, right? It's a different. And also then how many people actually are, are interested on that flight? So based on all the factors, they are changing the pricing. Yeah, even sometimes, suppose in New Year's, or even if you are buying after one year in the New Year's, uh, New Year's time, mm-hmm. all the f- uh, flight price is very high because they know that at that time the demand will be very high. Mm-hmm. So that is actually the dynamic pricing. And on the is a value-based pricing. 
value based pricing is a very standard so you feel whatever feel you are it's a value suppose maximum antique item there's a value based pricing there is no price you can't actually count the, you can't weigh the item you can't see that that okay how much actually the, the costing actually for the development or uh, repairing or uh, making the thing you can only feel that okay what kind of the value it can actually process to the people so that the value based marketing and lots of actually the jewelry item the ladies on the mess yeah mm -hmm. uh, Louis Vuitton they are the bag 10,000, 50,000, 20,000, they are, they are asking fee. It's all actually been waste. There is a, not that amount of material is there. Psychological pricing is another one. It is a, instead of asking the $10, people are asking $9.99. Yeah. So instead of asking the $500, they're asking the $499. So it's actually not, uh, it's just people are feeling that, okay, it's a last cost. But ultimately, it's the same thing. So it's a psychological one. Discounted pricing. So some company, suppose if you go to Perigardin and all those kind of e-commerce sites, they are always giving the discount. They know that okay, they will give the discount. So what is the people's psychology? Okay, if I buy this thing, I need, I will save this amount of money. But believe me, it is not always true. Yes. So they are actually are uh, playing with you that okay, they are giving a discounted price. So if you buy, it, you are getting a discount. Maybe tomorrow you will not get a discount. Let's buy. It. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it, but you can you can see that okay, tomorrow also the the same price is maybe there. Yeah. So that is the discounted pricing. There is a tired pricing there. So that is how it is happening. If you purchase a certain amount of pro items, but that item is one particular price but uh, and then if you are purchasing up to 30 the price is different mm. yeah so essentially different tire has a different level of pricing so some company actually doing that kind of things and bundle pricing this is very common if you are buying one uh, suppose two or three uh, soybean oil they are giving a, a very good offer mm. yeah so they in a all the grocery shop they are making a bundle item so they are actually the very popular one one is the subscription pricing the different kind of e-commerce mm -hmm. suppose the ott all the ott platform they are giving a subscription lots of mobile application service based application especially they are actually launching the subscription based uh, pricing another one is actually skimming pricing so that is uh, uh, what happened there so the new product has a high price then i have seen in this is in the center point if you see, if you go there, there is in the new pro new product, the baby item new product always in a high price. But their old product, yeah, the suppose just only one year one year before or six months before the item is a very very low or standard rate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that kind of thing they are doing because only to actually take that think take the money actually, so that they are costing actually need use. So that kind of is there and loss later pricing is there. Uh, what happened? Some company is uh, thinking actually, I will not only sell the product, I'll actually grab the customer. And the, uh, in that customer is very valuable. I can in future few few years, I'll get the money from him. So I want to grab it. So the, the way to grab you to give a discounted and less price, even it is a less than my costing price mm -hmm. so to sell to the uh, the customer and they grab it and they actually start using it. So this is actually the different, different model. Actually, people can use it and uh, uh, yeah, so it depends and we are suggesting our customer when they are coming what kind of pricing model they can use and what we are saying actually it is different stage of the business it is not actually on particularly that okay I have a, a product based business or I have a service based business or I have a fashion I have to use only this kind of uh, pricing model it is not like that it depends on which stage you are yeah and how much stock you have lots of other factors mm -hmm. so anytime you have to switch actually in different pricing so the platform the customer are using for their e-commerce platform, that is very important. Mm -hmm. And so that platform need a capability of changing the different pressure mm -hmm. model. So I, uh, our, our own platform model, platform the co-commerce, it's an enterprise mm -hmm. e-commerce platform, has a, this kind of feature more than around 15 different kind of pricing model you can switch immediately. Even a uh, different model, different product has a different model at the same time can be learning. Mm -hmm. I think as you mentioned, you know, there's so many different models and this is all part of profit maximization in e-commerce. So, so, you know, you, you really need to, to understand the different models, understand the market, understand, you know, the consumer behavior side of it. So there is a bit of, you know, research that you would need to do. And as you say, you know, when, when you're engaging with clients, you can provide some insights as well. Yes, look, uh, 
this uh, this thing actually the what we are actually offering to the customer while our customer comes to us we are telling them okay how they can actually maximize the profit mm. what kind of thing they have to do this can, this is the experience we have we are not ex- we are not giving the uh, uh, advice based on actually what actually written on the book yes, or what yes. is what other people are doing we are giving advice based on our experience what we have seen actually how the other people are actually making this much money and why they are not making making the making this thing yeah so that is a benefit however any customer that comes to royal well, this kind of benefit they will get it absolutely so i lead, i lead some advertisement of the royal <laughs> and yeah <laughs> no 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 but 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 ultimately what you're trying to say is you know you, uh, clients can live reach of the expertise right exactly. the expertise is based on market research and the rest of it you know over years i mean it's been over a decade sure. you've been in the space for 20 years sure. so so that's perfectly fine i think as we as we come into the to the end it's it's very appropriate because um, as part of the a journey that um, someone would take on a e-commerce platform is the checkout right so um let's talk about what innovative uh, payment technologies and checkout processes can be implemented to reduce cart uh, in ba- uh, abandonment um as well as to simplify the journey ultimately leading to profit maximization who need to understand one thing so whenever actually people actually add an item on the cart that means he has a very good intention to buy the product and then they're coming on the cart page they're feeling that okay no I'm not buying it I'm just leaving back yeah and that kind of happened actually very we have seen actually lots of things it's a why happened whenever you are buying an item at that time your brain is working that okay I have to pay this amount of money and you are keeping your hold in there with a card and you are you are thinking that okay I have to buy and if you are asking too many questions too many things yeah by this time people become annoyed and in annoyed mood people don't want to spend the money mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so what do you have to do you have to make this process so simple so fast Amazon and doing a actually one click checkout that is a, your card is there your address they have we just need to press one button and it will automatically do the checkout nothing else mm. and that kind of thing actually is very easy actually to convince the customer to actually the sell yeah if you but before that you you company need should have some trust actually the customer they know that okay even if i buy it if i don't like it i can refund it immediately and i that mm-hmm. the company will give a proper value of my what actually my decision so that's important but this is very important actually how easy i can actually buy the thing and the guest checkout lots of places i say suppose uh, whenever i'm buying a, a silver ticket Mm. Uh, it's a very real nature I do I love to do a registration I just want to go I want to see the seat I want to buy it immediately I don't want to put my name email all those different different things mm. because it's no one care I just need a seat number I want to go I want to sit on that thing no one to know actually which who I am right so that kind of places guest checking is very important so then mm. no need to go over the any other operation yeah suppose uh, then another way another thing now is a uh, very popular so buy now pay later Yeah, mm. that's actually suppose you are buying a five thousand dollar item. Instead of five thousand paying from your pocket immediately, if you say I can spend the money in a five month in a five year installment, you are just paying actually one thousand dollar or something like that. Yeah, mm. it's so easy to buy. So it will provoke you to buy. Yeah, so buy immediately. So mm. this kind of thing people can actually implement. And another important the uh, transparent pricing. How you actually charge the money. Yeah. So this is the one. This is the money. This is the actually the VAT, and this is the thing. Uh, this is the transport cost. All you have to write in a proper way so that people has no confusion. What you are saying, you said before, and what you are, are charging now uh, is is the same. Mm. So that kind of transparency you have to maintain. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a very you know very very uh, key points that you raised. And for me particularly, refund policy is a big thing. Yeah. Uh, you know when when I'm at a at a um, checkout. I know for sure listen if I'm not going to be too happy I know I could actually uh, return this particular product and Amazon is really doing good they don't ask any question whenever you are purchase an item and if you want to return it immediately they give it return so it gives us actually a huge positive vibe that okay if I buy from Amazon my money is secure yes Yes, absolutely. Now that's been very informative. I think you know, at the end of the day, for the viewers, uh, profit maximization in e-commerce is extremely important. Uh, as you as you you know, getting the business off the ground, you're getting your pricing models, 
uh, determined. And as you continue to grow, you always need to look at how best to maximize your profits. So I just also want to thank everyone for watching. Um, it's been really great discussing these topics. Yeah. Um, really encouraging you again to, to comment so that we can uh, take your questions and, and discuss them in future um, uh, you know, discussions that we have. And uh, it's been great, Rajiv. Definitely, definitely. And the viewers, actually, the question was really great. And we love to answer this kind of uh, question. And if you have a more question, just send it to us. We just love to actually add any now in different uh, episode. And we will actually come back to you with our new video. And thank you. Thanks for watching. Thank you.